Now, one of the signs of the end of time also is the Prophet said, لا تقوم الساعة حتى تروا أمورا عظاما يتفاقم شأنها عندكم حتى يقول أحدكم هل ذكر نبيكم شيئا من هذه الأشياء that the end of time will not come until you see amazing things, unbelievable things, umuran idama, grandiose things, things that just are unbelievable. And then he said, the, This matter will become increasingly, increasingly grave towards you. It's matter, the affair. Tafaqum is things that move towards a critical head where people become more increasingly more concerned. Now if you look now at what's happening in the world, things are becoming so frightening that people are becoming increasingly more concerned and increasingly more confused at the same time. And the Prophet ﷺ said that in those days, يُصْبِحُ الْمَرْءُ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا A man will wake up in the morning a believer and go to sleep a kafir. And, the, and he also warned about people would go just to see the Dajjal. يَحْشِبُ نَفْسُهُ مُؤْمِنًا He'll think that he's a mu'min, but he will become confused by the arguments of the Dajjal. The Dajjal will literally confuse his mind, his intellect. And he warned us, the Prophet ﷺ, but let me get to these other matters. The Prophet ﷺ said, نِكَاحُ الْمَرْأَةِ بِالْمَرْأَةِ وَالرَّجُلْ بِالرَّجُلْ that a man will marry a man and a woman will marry a woman. And he said nikah. And it doesn't mean zina. Because at that time things like that were happening. They knew about zina. The zina is mentioned in the Quran. He said nikah al mar'ati, which its primary meaning is marriage. That a man will marry a man and a woman will marry a woman. And now this is in the legislation in the Supreme Court in the United States of America in which they have legalized in certain states the marriage of two of the same sex become legal and we're witnessing this in our own time and this is going to become a norm now one of the other things that the prophet ﷺ said rijal bil rijal wa nisa bil nisa that you will see people feel uh, sexually satisfied uh, a male with a male and a female with a female again becoming an increasingly uh, gross matter in in the uh, cities all over the world the proliferation of homosexuality and lesbianism Unbelievable things that people will life 20, 30 years ago. Even in these countries, people couldn't openly admit these things. They would lose their jobs. And this is becoming a norm. Within our own lifetime, in the last few years, these things are becoming norms. This is something phenomenal, really. And we're, I think we're just all asleep. We're just watching these things happen in the daydreams. I mean, we have to really think about these things. These are deeply... Deep, uh, frightening matters that we should be concerned about that our children are growing up in environments in which human beings grow they're not even human beings less than human beings worse than animals because even the animals don't do that and they'll try to use proof that monkeys uh, have homosexuality amongst them and the Prophet and the Quran uses the monkey as the lowest example, the lowest metaphor for a human being. In fact, he said in the end of time, people would, that you spihuna, they'll dance all night with, and he said, and ma'asib, on their heads are musical instruments. And Allah Anam, now people wear these things on their head, over their head, these phones, and they dance to musical instruments that are on their heads, with their tape recorded and radios and these things. And he said, They'll They'll wake up monkeys and pigs. And this is called musk. And the musk of the people of the last days is an internal musk. It doesn't mean they literally take the forms of monkeys and pigs. Their inner reality will be monkeys and pigs. So homosexuality, yes, you do find it amongst the monkeys. And But the fact is, that is what you're imitating. We imitate Bani Adam. We imitate the prophets. We want to be like the Siddiqun wa Shuhada wa Salihun. We don't want to be like monkeys and pigs. So that you use as a proof for your own deviation, the monkey and pig is a sign of your own gross, pathetic state and condition. And yet these things are put forward like they're rational arguments or something like that. Unbelievable condition. Umur and idama. The Prophet ﷺ said, that people, he said, that people would drive up to the masjids. And he said, 
which means they would ride very elegant seats. No matter was the seat of the kings. The seats of the kings would be considered like now the seats of cars. They're like uh, king seats of the ancient times. The kings were the ones that rode in the closed uh, uh, containers like a hodage for women. The noble women used to ride in the hodage, which was very similar to a car. It looks like a car in its outward form. And the Prophet ﷺ said they would drive right up out of Abu Abba in the masjid. Now in the old days, they didn't bring the animals near the masjid. So it doesn't make any sense that they would drive right up to the... And he said that those people would come in and pray and their women would be naked. Their women would be naked and they would go in and they, they would pray. And the Prophet ﷺ said, They have no khalaq, they have no portion of the akhirah. And he said, They're people that are cursed. They're sick people. I mean, this is the type of condition that we're in. It's unbelievable. We're literally daydreaming, going through life daydreaming. The Prophet Wasallam said that you will see, he said, From my ummah, I haven't seen them. And then he said, the first one, he said, They would be, have uh, these as nab like, uh, the tails of, of donkeys, of cows, which are the whips that these uh, uh, disgusting, despicable uh, soldiers of these tyrants in the Muslim countries, and you see them carrying their sticks, and this is the interpretation that Sheikh Muhammad al-Amin al gave, that these are the police that do the orders of the tyrants, and they go and they beat the people, and this is happening in all of the prisons and the jails in the Muslim countries right now. People that pray and fast, young men and women that pray and fast are being beaten by these, these despicable less than human beings. And they're from, those people are for the fire and they have no excuse before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say that we're just doing what we were told. Even the kuffar reject that as a proof and you look at the Nuremberg trials when they condemn those people who said we were just following orders. No, you have a conscience. You've been given a damir by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have to reflect on that fact. You have to reflect on that. Because Allah says that Fir'aun wa Haman wa Junuduma, Fir'aun and Haman and his army, all of them are in the wrong. You can't just say, oh, I was just following orders. That's not an excuse with Allah. There is no following the created one if you it means disobeying the, the creator. And this is what the Islam came to take us out of this ibadah, this ubudiya lil makhluqeen. The, the worship of created things. This is the pre-Islamic disease of the Persians and the Romans. The Arabs, interestingly enough, did not worship their leaders. This is something they learned from the Persians and the Romans. Following the Ajam, that you will follow the other peoples. And the interesting thing, now they've left the worship of divine kings. See, these Europeans have left all that, the worship of their rulers. I mean, they, they uh, throw them out of office. But the Muslims now, everywhere you look, there's statues and pictures of these tyrants. And the Muslims, they put their picture out of fear in their, in their hawanit of the thing. You go to Syria and you, somebody who doesn't have the picture of, of this chayin uh, in that place, he doesn't have the picture and somebody going, what's the matter? Don't you like the havila? Uh, don't you like him? Something wrong with you? Where's the picture? Like it's a ubudiyah. And he's too afraid to say, uh, right? the, the angel doesn't come in a house where there's a picture and a dog. So what about a picture of a dog? They're too afraid to say that. And really, from one sense, we can't blame them. You know? Wallahi. I mean, we should have pity. A shabaqa ala ummati Muhammadan, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We should have pity for these people. And many of them have suffered because of their, just not even speaking out, just not conforming, just not going along with it. So I'm not in any way making fun of those people. Really, we should have shabaqa and rahma for those people. It's a wretched condition to be in, but this is our state.